हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज अवर फर्स्ट लेक्चर्स माय सेल डॉक्टर के के धांडे हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड नाउ दिस सेमिस्टर्स आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू दिस सब्जेक्ट सॉलिड मैकेनिक्स दिस इज द न्यू सिलेबी फ्रॉम दैट एकेडमिक ईयर the code subject code of this subject is 202041 teaching scheme for that subject four lectures per week is already allotted practicals two hours per week and for that subject in semesters 30 marks in semesters 70 marks and for practicals there is 50 marks the total credit provided for that subject is 5 in which four credits for theory one credits for our practicals uh, in first semesters or you may say in your fee first years you already studied engineering mathematics 1 and 2 system in mechanical engineering engineering mechanics these subjects are the prerequisites of these courses now what is mean by solid mechanics we are going to study solid mechanics solid mechanics is the branch of quantum mechanics that studies the behavior of solid materials especially their motion and deformations under the action of forces temperature change and phase changes the subject of this mechanics is also known as strength of materials which name is already in previous syllabi with in this subject this subject deals with the behavior of solid object subject to the stresses and strains the complete theory began with the consideration of the behavior of one and two dimensional members of structures whose state of stress can be approximated at two dimensional and then generalize to three dimensional to develop a more complete theory of elastic and plastic behavior of the materials in the mechanics of material the strength of material is its ability to withstand an applied load without failure or plastic deformation the study of this subject often refers to various methods for calculating the stresses and strains in the structural members such as beam column and shaft now here question is that why we study that subject what is the need of this subject why we have to study this subject in this subject we study the internal effects that means stresses and strain occurs due to the external loads acting on deformable body or you may say structure in this subject we determines the strength deformations stiffness and stability of the materials for the various conditions now if we see in this picture aeroplane is there so in this subject we study the external forces acting on the body as well as internal structure internal forces acting on the body when the external forces act on the body if we see these pictures aerodynamic forces gravitational force engine thrust are the external forces acting on the body in this subject we are also calculating or determines the strength of the materials if we not if we are not concentrating the strength of the materials what may happens this picture will show the bridges collapse if the material will not shake for the proper strength now the objective of the subject is to acquire the basic knowledge of stress strain due to the various types of loading to draw shear force and bending moment diagram for the transverse loading to determine bending shear stress slope and deflection of beam to solve the problems of torsional shear stress for shaft and buckling for the column to apply the concept of principal stresses 
and theories of failure to utilize the concept of solid mechanics on the application based combined mode of loading the outcomes of this subject is means when after completion of that course this subject you should able to define the various types of stresses and strains develop on determinant and indeterminant members you should able to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram for various types of transverse loading and support you should also able to compute the slope and deflection bending stresses and shear stresses on a beam calculate the torsional shear stress in shaft and buckling on the column apply the concept of principal stresses and theories of failure to determine the stresses on a two dimensional element and lastly you should able to utilize the concept of sfd shear force diagrams and bmd means bending moment diagram torsion and principal stresses to solve combined loading application based problems you know all subjects are generally divided into the six unit now for that this subject our first unit is simple stresses and stress for this unit 10 hours are provided and we divide this unit into the 10 hours so simple stress and strain and again after completing this this first unit you should recognize the types of load applied on a body or you may say components systems or machines you should able to understand calculate and analyze the various types of stresses and strains developed due to loading you should able to understand hooke's law modulus of elasticity factor of safety and its importance in the elastic bodies today's lectures contains types of load what is stress types of stress what is strain types of strains poisson's ratio hooke's law modulus of elasticity and lastly factor of safety now our first point is types of load then what is meant by load a force acting on the body we may say the load is basically divided into three categories static load dynamic load and impact load first we may say static load or another name is dead load a good example of the static load is the weight of building acting on the ground or another example car is parking park at a car park or you may say in standing positions now here if we see the first pictures that is the static load a person a man who stand with holding some books here bridges are the bridges are there it is a structure in that case dumbbells are in our hand that is the, the we may say that is the static load car is park at the its place that is our static load second is dynamic load dynamic load you may say it is a live load also dynamic load or forces are the loads that have change in either size position or direction example of the dynamic load is moving car on the road weight of moving car on the road that is a good examples of that dynamic load third is impact loading impact load means the load applied by moving bodies moving object if we say that when the car is moving on the road when the car is park at is in the parking area so we may say that is a static load when car is moving on the road there we may say it is a dynamic load but when car is moving and accident may occurs then we may say that is the impact load the another examples of the impact load is when we hammer hit the nail at that time we put our hammer and upper side means some falling load some on some particular height that is also called as the impact load now load is defined as the force tending to effect and produce the deformation stresses or you may say displacement in the structure again here concentrate on that load definitions load is defined as a force tending to effect 
and produce the deformations stresses or displacement in the structure or body load is denoted by capital p and it measured in newton or in kilo newton in engineering applications we may say the loads are basically in tension tensile load and compressive load and for the arithmetical purposes algebraic sum we may say tensile forces are considered positive whereas compressive forces we consider negative again load is classified as point load axial load tensile load compressive load surface or shear load uniform distributed load uniform varying load and eccentric load if we say that figure 1 in that case point load is there point load means when the load is concentrated at one particular point then that is known as the point load suppose for example i say this is the load and this load is acting on it load is acting on it it is act on a particular one points so this is known as the point load now another is axial load when the load is acting on the axis of the body suppose i say said this is my body and when the force is acting in this side axis of that body then we may say that is the axial load third is tensile load when the here wire rope is there and it hangs some load it lifting some load so in that case the tensions occurs in that side in that wire ropes so we may say that is the tensile load or you may say tensile load means when the load is acting when the load is acting away from the center of the body if i say that the load is acting in that direction load is acting in this direction load is acting in this directions away from the body away from the body or centers then it is called as the tensile load it is given and when the load is acting towards the center of the body this towards the center of the body then that is known as the compressive load in that pictures we are seeing that some this ball is there balloon is there or yeah, and force is acting in the both direction towards the center so this is known as the compressive load shear load when two surfaces are there like in this manner when two surfaces overlap in this side and the load is acting tangentially in this direction and both direction so at that time also we may say that is the shear load this figure if we observe here three sections are there three plates are there and force is acting and that middle plates and above upper and bottom plate also so this is called as the shear load uniform distributed load uniformly distributed load when the load is varying or distributed equally throughout the its span for example it's a bridge now see this bridge this is the number of columns so we may say that is the support and load here load is acting on it so it is uniformly distributed throughout its column so that is known as the uniform distributed load uniform next uniform varying load means when the load is varying from zero to maximum side then this is known as the uniform varying load lastly eccentric load when here if we see the last figure in that side this is the section center of that figure here this is the section of that figure and this load is acting here load is acting here away from the center then this is known as the eccentric load now our next point is stress external system of forces acts on a body it undergoes some deformation as the body undergoes deformation its molecule set up some resistance to deformations and this resistance per unit area to deformation is known as stress now simple examples we will think on it when we stretch the rubber in rubber we stretch the rubber initially it is it doesn't stretch but when the force more force is applied on it then its length changes why it changes because at initial side 
and initially when we applied the force at that time internal resistance will be greater than the external force applied on it that's why rubber doesn't stretch out but when the external force will be more than the internal resistance at that time deformation starts so in that case we may say that this resistance per unit area to deformations is known as stress so another way we may say force per unit area that is also called as the stress simply stress is denoted by sigma so we may say load upon cross sectional area so sigma is equal to you may say sigma is equal to p upon a where p is equal to load or force acting on the body and a is equal to cross sectional area of the body in our si systems the unit of the stress is pascal unit of stress is pascal 1 pascal is equal to 1 newton per mm square 1 kilo pascal is equal to 10 raised to 3 pascal means 1000 pascal is equal to 1 kilo pascal 1 mega pascal is equal to 10 raised to 6 pascal it means according to this is equal to 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square is equal to 1 newton per mm square it means 1 mega pascal is equal to you may say 1 newton per mm square 1 giga pascal is equal to 10 raised to 9 pascal it means you may convert it 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square or you may say 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square remember here 1 giga pascal is equal to 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square or you may write here also 1 giga pascal is equal to 10 raised to 3 mega pascal now types of stresses stress are basically classified into three categories direct stress or you may say simple stress indirect stress and third is combined stress in six unit we will study this about the combined stress now again direct stress are classified into two categories shear stress and normal stress and normal stress again categorized into tensile stress and compressive stress whereas indirect stress are classified into torsional stress and bending stress now strain whenever a single force acts on a body it undergoes some deformation this deformation per unit length is known as strain strain is denoted by epsilon or in some books it is denoted by small e also now here if we say here when the force is acting on the body it changes its dimensions if we considered here three dimensional bodies length width and thickness when the force is applied on it length will be change length will be change similar way even the rod will be there the way we applied the load on it its diameter will be reduced and its length goes on increasing so in that case we may say length is the linear dimensions whereas diameter width thickness are the lateral dimensions so in shortly we may say strain is also defined as ratio of change in dimension to original dimensions it has no unit it has no unit remember here types of strain strains are basically classified into three categories first is linear strain its another name is longitudinal strain lateral strain shear strain longitudinal strain again classified into two categories tensile strain compressive strain and volumetric strain now come to the first point tensile stress and tensile strain now we have learned when the load is acting away from the center of body then that load we may say that is the tensile load so when a body is subjected to to equal and opposite axial pulls are uh, then the stress induced in that cross sectional area of the body is known as tensile stress 
tensile load there will be a decrease in cross sectional area and increase in length of the body so we may say the ratio of increase in length to original length is known as the tensile strain now if you see the this pictures here rod diameter d is given which having the original length l after when the load is applied on both end then here delta is shown delta is the change in length its length increasing and correspondingly its lateral dimensions width goes on decreasing then we may say tensile stress is equal to tensile load upon cross sectional area p upon a unit remains same that is newton per mm square or you may say pascal you may say mega pascal and tensile strain tensile strain change in length upon original length but particularly we may say that in the tensile strain due to that tensile load there is a change in length increase in length so definition becomes tensile strain is defined as the ratio of increase in length to original length delta l upon l whereas in that case delta l is equal to increase in length l is called as original length next point is compressive stress and strain when a body is subjected to two equal and opposite axial pushes axial pushes axial pushes p called as the compressive load and the stress induced in that section of the body is known as compressive stress compressive load there will be an increase in cross sectional area and decrease in length of the body the ratio the ratio of decrease in length to the original length is known as the compressive stress now here again i am repeating compressive stress means it is the ratio of compressive load to the cross sectional area unit remains same that is newton per mm square or you may say mega pascal compressive strain now in that case we may say change in length upon original length but here change in length means due to that push load length will be reduced so we may say decrease in length to original length so definition will becomes compressive strain is defined as the decrease in length to original length again we may say delta l upon l but here delta l is nothing but it is the decrease in length now next point is shear stress and shear strain the stress induced in a body when subjected to two equal and opposite forces are acting tangentially across the resisting area or section is known as the shear stress now here if we see that pictures in that side this one plate this is the another body it is connected with the help of or joined with the help of rivet one tangential force is acting in right hand side another is acting in the left hand side directions when the force will exceed what will happen this rivet will be shear off this rivet will be shear off so we may say here we are not using here the word tensile we are using here word tangential load so shear stress is equal to shear resistance upon cross sectional area or shear area and shear stress is denoted by tau tau is equal to p upon a again here unit newton per mm square or mega pascal now here if we say here this just i am saying that body to you this body this is my body and i am applying the load on it at that time so observe that figure also simultaneously when the force is acting on its side the base of that body remains constant and upper side is deflected or you may say it is deformed it is deformed so here we may say this sides is constant when the tangential force is acting on its side this body deforms that points goes to another this side this point goes to this side so in that case and it becomes then deflected through angle gamma so angle gamma is a measure of the distortion or change in shape of the element and is called as the 
shear strain because shear strain is an angle so it is measured in degree or radians so tan gamma is equal to delta upon this l delta upon l and lastly volumetric strain when the load is acting on that side we have seen its length is also change its lateral dimensions width and thickness also change ultimately its volume will be change hence another strain is volumetric strain so it is defined as the ratio of change in volume to original volume of the body and volumetric strain is denoted by ev is equal to delta v upon v whereas delta v is equal to change in volume capital v is equal to original volume here again is strain is there so it has no unit next is next point is indirect stress bending stress and torsional stresses are the indirect stress when the four one end is fixed here cantilever beam is given and that side if we say that this is the bar one end is fixed at another end force is applied or load is acting on it in that direction when the load is acting at that time this bar or you may say this rod deflected from its original positions that is known again we may say the force when the load is acting on that body this body will deform so this actions this action this curvature indicates that it bends and that is called as the bending stress next torsions torsions here again we may say this is the one bar is given see that picture observe is one end is fixed force is acting acting on it circumferentially in this side so in this side what happens when the force is acting on that side so we may say in that case that is a torsion twisting moment twisting torsional force is acting on that point so twisting take place if you observe here twisting take place so this known as the torsional stresses in shortly summary of that side compression nature of loading and corresponding stress develop if the load is compressive towards the center then compressive stresses are induced when the load is acting away from the body then it is known as the tension when the tangential load is acting on the body deformation occurs then it is known as the shear load and stresses induced in that section is known as shear stress this torsion here bending now types of strain linear strain and longitudinal strain when the load is acting on the body when the tangential load is acting on the body body deforms along the direction of applied force then this is known as the linear strain or longitudinal strain or you may say it is tensile strain because tensile load is acting on the body in that case that is known as the change in length the deformation length we may say that is the change in length another linear strain and longitudinal strain when a body is subjected to an axial load there is an increase in length of body but at the same time there is a decrease in other dimension of the body that is lateral dimension so longitudinal strain or linear strain you may again define as the ratio of increase or decrease in length to original length because when the load is acting tensile then there is a increase in length when the load is acting in compressive manner then there is a decrease in length that's why definition becomes the ratio of increase or decrease in length to original length lateral strains we have seen there are three dimensions one is linear and remaining two are the lateral dimensions when the linear dimension changes correspondingly lateral dimension also changes so lateral strain is defined as the strain at right angles to the direction of applied load or in another manner you may say also lateral strain is defined as the change in diameter to original diameter because if we say that the simple rod diameter when we stretch it its diameter decreases whether its length 
increases. So if we say that in same principle we apply for the rectangular or square bar, then change in width will be there. So we may say change in width to original width. Change in thickness to original thickness. That is known as also lateral strain. Now, Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio. It is the ratio of lateral strain to linear strain, and its value is varied from 0.25 to 0.35. Hooke's law. You already studied in 12th standard also physics in the first year also. You already studied this Hooke's law. Hooke's law states that within the elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to strain, and ratio of stress to strain is constant. And the constant of proportionality is known as Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity. If we see this uh, small derivation, stress is directly proportional to strain. Stress is indicated by sigma. Strain is denoted by small e. And whereas this capital E is equal to sigma upon small e, so in that case sigma e is equal to sorry sigma e is equal to stress and small e is equal to strain. So in that case you may say modulus of elasticity is equal to stress upon strain. So modulus of elasticity again here defined as modulus of elasticity is the ratio of stress to strain. Modulus of elasticity. Is the ratio of stress to strain. Now here again we elaborate that equations. Modulus of elasticity capital E is equal to sigma upon E. Sigma means P upon A. Small e that is strain. Strain is equal to delta L upon L. If we reform these equations, then capital E is equal to P L upon A into delta L. And rearranging into delta L. To calculate the change in length, delta L is equal to P L upon A E. This is the equations to calculate the change in length. Our last point is factor of safety. Now, why factor of safety is required? That is the first question. Do you know what is meant by factor of safety? Factor of safety is the word factors. While calculating the stresses, while designing the any machine element. We consider the factor of safety. Simple examples I am giving to you here. Now all of you know that the two-wheeler is already designed for two person. But nowadays, how many people are using that? Sometimes three, sometimes four. So in that case, we will design. We are already designed for the two people. If we take the average weight of that person, sixty sixty five, so maximum weight will be one thirty newton, one thirty kg. But now We are using for four, so that in that case, if we are not consider their factor of safety, that two wheeler will not be used. But now, while designing the any machine component, we are always using the factor of safety. So the factor of safety is nothing but it is the ratio of ultimate load to allowable load is known as the factor of safety. Factor of safety is also defined as Yield stress criteria. Factor of safety also defined as the ratio of yield stress to allowable stress. Now, ultimate stress to allowable load. This is applicable to brittle materials. Yield stress to allowable stress. It is applicable for ductile materials. Thank you. Any questions from that side? Any doubt?